everybody. Pastor Randy here. Welcome to Making It Simple. It's a beautiful Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Looking forward to jumping right back into our teaching. We've been talking for the last several lessons about patience. We continually find the word wait. What we've come to understand is how these two things absolutely go hand in hand. In order to wait, I must have patience. We look all throughout the Bible, you know, we, we're always looking for examples, you know, and, and obviously we, we've heard about having the patience of Job and we hear all these different, you know, different stories and, and, and ideas and what have you. You know, we can think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, they had to be in the most stressful situation that we can imagine as we think about, you know, they're, they're facing the fiery furnace. I mean, you're going to get burned to death. Um, they express great patience because they said, we trust in God. Even though facing peril, and certainly maybe your heart beating a little faster, but they, they trusted that. They believed that God would deliver them. Daniel in the lion's den, Paul and Silas in jail, all these different great examples. But what I want to share with you today in this final part of the teaching on patience is our greatest example. Because there is none greater, there is none stronger, there is none more powerful than Christ himself. On a twofold matter, Number one, we see that he not only displayed incredible patience and incredible faith in his life, we see that when he faced an unfair trial. You know, there's a lot of commentary today going on about a recent unfair trial. A lot of people want to compare that to Jesus. I don't want to go down that road. However, similarities in the fact of something being done wrong and, and there being corruption at the center of it. Um, it is very familiar because it's exactly we see what happened uh, in this particular case. We see as Jesus stood before Pilate, it was actually Pilate standing before Jesus if we want really to get it right down to it, but he stood there quiet. He exerted great patience, but there was a reason you see, he saw beyond that moment. He saw that what that patience would give birth to, what that patience would bring was worth what he was going to endure. We see that continued as he's hanging on the cross and he's hearing the mocking of the crowd and he's hearing the blasphemy and the, the challenges. Oh, if you're really the son of God, you know, make get yourself down and all this other stuff. What we understand is the example that patience gives is as human. It tells us it's possible because he operated in the human condition. But I want us to see the other side of that. What was the big picture? What was the, the, the reason, if you will? What was, what was, the, what was the, the drive? Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, and it simply says, The Lord does not delay his promise as some would understand delay. In other words, it's not on purpose, and it's not just because, well, I'm going I'm to drag it out a little while just to, just to make them sweat a little bit. Or, no, 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 no. It says, but is patient with you. Think about what he's saying here. The Lord is not delaying his promise, as some would understand delay, but rather is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all come to repentance. Do you grasp that, friends? God is patient with us because he wants to spend eternity with us. Jesus endured. It tells us in the book of Hebrews that he endured the cross, the cross that was set before him. It was a joy set before him was the cross. He endured this, not because it was enjoyable. He saw on the other side of that, that took great patience. You know, and when we think about why, how could he be so patient? Because he loves us beyond measure. 
And it says he desires that none should perish, but that all come to repentance. Friends, his desire is for everyone to get saved. Now, is that going to happen? No. But here's the, here's the thing. It's his desire that all should be saved or at least know they could be. And that requires patience on his part. We, we get so impatient today with everything. But when we, when we are reminded in this that God waits on feeble-minded people, how many times have we put stuff off in our life? Because, well, I'll get to it later. But later never gets here. Tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. When we realize, and I'm going to use myself again as an example, not to, not to pat myself on the back at all, but I was almost 30 years old before I came to the understanding of who Christ is in, in reality to me, not just a biblical figure, but my Savior, that what He did for me, what it means, and the depth of that, and then it's taken the last 20-something years uh, to figure that out. You know, and in the last four or five, it has really become deeper and more profound than I could ever even begin to explain. God had patience with me. He waited on me. The offer was always there. He waited on me. When we realized and think of just how blessed we are and how grateful we should be for his patience, we should see the beauty in that that should require us to have a little more, exercise a little more patience on our side. I can give you some quick examples. Patient husbands can win their wives. Patient wives can win their husbands. Patient parents can win their children. Patient employees are a whole lot easier to work with. Patient drivers tend to have less accidents. On my way to work this morning, I'm making a left-hand turn only to have to stop really quick because someone passing me on the left-hand side. People are impatient, friends. People are in a hurry. And we could go on and on and on about points of illustrations. But what we need to understand is our witness, our, our life is our testimony. It is not the day we got saved. It is not the day we said, you know, yes to Jesus. All, all that's fine. That, that, is the, that is the day of our birth, our new birth. But our witness is our life. What do people see? What do people see? I'm not asking for perfection. God's not either. He's, not, he's asking for surrender. He's asking, give me your life. Let me shape and mold that. Patience. Some versions use the word long-suffering without a question. As we've picked this vine in a very, very deep way, today is seven parts of this that we've talked about it. It is without a doubt a fruit of the Spirit, without a question. It is obvious when God is there, and it is very obvious when He is not. But it's never because He's not there we've not allowed Him to be. See, friends, God can give us the ability to move forward. God can give us the ability to move mountains. God can give us the ability to be patient because we've been made in His image and He's been patient with us for a very, very, very long time. The love we have for the Lord, it will begin to grow. It will begin to open the door for all of these things to become reality, a deeper love, a greater joy, a calmer peace, and a beautiful patience, which leads us to our next section that we'll start teaching on kindness. We absolutely have the ability. So as we wrap this up, how's your patience today? How's your patience today? If you need some help, all you got to do is call. All you got to do is call on him and he will help you. Call on him today. Over time, for many in this world, he has had an exercise great patience. Maybe that might be you today. Maybe he's been waiting on you to say yes to Jesus. Maybe he's been waiting on you to say yes to the gospel and yes to the gift that he gives us of eternal life. My prayer today 
is if you are not where you need to be, that today would be the day. Today would be the day that would change your life forever. If you are, you've come to know Christ, but you're not exercising all the gifts that he's given us. You're, you're not really in it, having that deep, passionate love. You don't have joy. You have no peace. Your patience is out the window. Come back. Come back to him. Just, just, just call out to him and say, Lord, I'm not where I need to be, and he will help you. I believe that with all my heart. We will be back in one week. Next Monday, we will be back to our normal scheduled programs. I'm going to be off the rest of the week. I have a few days away that I get to go and just take some downtime. I don't get to do that very, very often, but I wanted to share this broadcast with you today as we prepare for uh, taking a few days away. But God bless you. Thank you so much for all the support and the great comments and the prayers over this program. It is my heart. It is something I enjoy doing more than you could possibly imagine. Making it simple. We've been doing it now for 400 episodes. We've been doing this a long, long time. And uh, many people are just now finding out about it. You know, we've not done a whole lot of promotional things and such. But, but, but the advent of social media stuff, we've gotten it out there a lot more. And I thank you all for watching and, uh, and, and sharing these things with others. And I pray that you would continue to do that. We will be back next Monday, one week from today, with the next part of Picking the Vine. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness. And boy, that's going to be a great study too. God bless you, friends. Have a great rest of the day and an awesome week. And I'll see you next Monday.